get ready for the trip of a lifetime. This is the series with the most incredible and shocking holiday behaviour. <laughs> Capturing stupid antics on smartphones. With a camera in every tourist pocket, we're getting into the action like never before. Raw, real and uncensored. This is World's Wildest Holidays. Coming up... Trouble at sea. Oh, oh, is that the oh, my God! The pyramid scheme to get an amazing selfie. 50 people have died in the last 100 or 200 years falling off. Oh, and we're hitting the slopes oh. for a crash course in extreme stupidity. Oh. Oh. It's literally like a 180. But first, we're taking off with the millions of young Brits who every summer pack their bags, sack off their jobs, and hop on a cheap flight for a couple of weeks of sun, sand, and seeing double. They're not just catching a tan, but all their bad behavior on camera too. But this lot don't generally wait for the plane to touch down before getting the party started. This clip is either a plane full of passengers filmed screaming for their lives as their plane plummets to earth, or it's a cabin full of rowdy Irish holidaymakers filmed en route from Dublin to Ibiza, throwing a party at 35,000 feet. Unfortunately for the human race, it's the latter. I've seen better behaved hijackers. Admittedly, the flight only costs 20 quid each way, and they'll be paying a lot more than that when they get to the nightclubs in Ibiza, so I don't blame them for making the most of it. And to be fair, it looks like they're having a great time. All except the poor mug whose job it is to control this wild bunch. Take a seat, the plane is He does not look happy. <laughs> But he should count his lucky stars he wasn't on this flight. The passengers had to take control on this plane in Russia when one chap reportedly had one too many vodkas and caused a right scene. He was eventually dragged off board, prompting all concerned to give themselves a pat on the back. Until they realized he was the pilot. I'm joking, of course. Now, you wouldn't have to deal with that sort of mayhem on a flight from London to Miami. That's where people act in a more sophisticated way, right? Wrong. There's two people in this toilet. You can't see their faces, but trust me, they'll look very pleased with themselves. They're sure no one else has clocked their Mile High Club antics. Won't be so pleased with themselves when they realize that bloke in front with his headphones on was filming the whole thing. No point in sneaking out, mate. You've been well and truly rumbled. And if you think things are out of control in the air, wait until the holiday hits the ground. We all know Colombia's got a colorful reputation, for sure. But throw in four lads on a gap year into the mix with mucking about on the mind, and you've ordered yourself a cocktail of catastrophe. We gotta do it. Say hello to Paddy Cartwright from Belfast. We were in Cartagena in Colombia, and we were just kind of wandering around looking at what to do and saw jet skis. Ah, now, the one thing I know about hiring jet skis is they come with strict health and safety rules. The one thing they kept saying was stay as far apart as possible. Stay as far apart as possible. They didn't... We, we spoke a tiny bit of Spanish, and they spoke a tiny bit of English, but the one thing I kept saying was, you know, apart, apart. Yes, strict health and safety rules. But did they take those on board? Okay, we're about to have a drag race. We're going to these boys out here. Dad, you stay there. Everyone gets a jack. Yeah, that sounds a bit dangerous. Yeah, I think it was kind of inevitable. I think it probably was going to happen. It just 
it just depended who it was going to happen to. I was starting to turn and hit hit a wave, and it completely killed my speed. Nearly fell off the other end. I was about to shout, and nearly fell off. And as I turned around, oh, oh Jesus! Ah! Oh my God! Ah. It really isn't as bad as all that, is it? Oh. Yes, it is. Oh, my God. Oh, it's out of the boat. Oh, my God. Like, I was, I kind of, I think the shock and the adrenaline just hit me so quickly, and I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, traveling, just been run over by a jet ski. Oh, my leg is, is open. Oh, you can see my bone. You can see my Timmy and Jack. That looks nasty. I'm guessing the jet skiing's over for today. Time for the hospital. I could still, I could walk on it and things and move it. Like I, I could walk to, I walked to the taxi. I, there wasn't, there wasn't an ambulance running or anything. In the hospital, I put the, um, like the needle in to numb, to numb the area around so they could start stitching it up. Like which, whatever happened, like the needle went in and I was like, whoa. And then started feeling a bit grim. I could see there was like a big chunk had come out of my leg. And then it was just a bit of white there. So I just kind of went, oh my, that's bone. That's, that's real bad. It's gone all the way. If you're wondering what's under that blur, it's a disgusting medical procedure far too harrowing to show. And the result was a scar for life in the shape of an L. L for legend. There is a victorious ending of sorts to this sorry tale, though. A couple of days after it, we had to get a, a flight to get into Bogota, I think. And um, we, we managed to get me a wheelchair. So we all got, we were all the first ones on and off the plane. You know, there was a bit of a silver lining to it. OK, you nearly lost a leg, but you did get free speedy boarding. Now that's what I call getting your priorities right. Now, from summer hotspots to somewhere even cooler. Take a look at this guy on a snowmobile in top gear and racing to the top of this snowy hill. But what happens next? Let's find out. Well, there's no better way to test a new snowmobile than by driving it full pelt towards a blind summit. It's not just the snow that's thick at this resort. Crikey, is that guy okay? Give us a signal, any signal. Woo! Oh yeah, he's okay. Just another stupid guy with a smartphone. But on the ski slopes, holidaymakers are filming more tricks, more stunts, and more fails than ever before. If you're lucky, your daredevil antics will go viral and you'll be immortalised. Oh, God. Or in this guy's case, oh, no. hospitalised. He was fine. Oh, God. Eventually. Oh, no. <laughs> now, it's important to make an impression on the slopes, but at least dress for the weather. Looking at that, it must be very, very cold, if you know what I mean. All fun and games on the way down, but he's got to get back up again somehow, and I shudder to think where his lift pass is. <laughs> Mind you, it's not just skiers. Now here's a chairlift going bananas. This terrifying incident in Georgia saw scared skiers left at the mercy of malfunctioning machinery. Stuck in reverse and battling down the mountain at twice its usual speed, it's no wonder these skiers are as white as snow. Ah! It looks so dangerous. Thankfully, the skier who filmed this made sure they kept way back, ah! instead of helping and risk being whacked by a flying human. Ah! Amazingly, there were only 11 mild injuries. But it was a truly horrific incident. Although, on the plus side, the queues were a bit shorter the next morning. With more smartphones, drones and action cams on the piste than ever before, 
skiers just can't resist showing off. But not every attempt to dazzle on the slopes meets with success, as Jenny Lothrop from Derbyshire discovered on a trip to the Alps. So, we were off on a ski holiday to La Plan in France. I was going with some eight or nine friends. So I was raring to go, and I was determined to show that I was one of the better skiers of the group. We were all having a great time. I was, like, zipping down the mountain, being like, yeah, I'm one of the best ones here. Like, watch me go. Like, I'd never felt so confident skiing. I think you know where this is heading, even if Jenny didn't. As the famous saying goes, pride comes before an almighty balls up. There was this jump that people were doing. It was like just kind of li this tiny little jump, like not much of a jump at all. So I watched a bunch of people do it. Some of my friends went ahead of me, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm going to do this. Famous last words. My friend JC goes, and I'm watching him, and I'm like, he's doing it fine, and he had like a little bit of a wobble. I think at this point I actually say, oh, I'm going to fall over. <laughs> I'm going to fall over. <laughs> Yes, you did, Jenny. Nothing wrong with your memory. I'm scared! Oh, I, you should be. <laughs> Ouch! No wonder Jenny can't bear to watch it. It's just too painful. So obviously, we showed it to her. Oh. Oh, God. I just wish I could go back and not do it. Oh! Oh, brutal. So I want to put some ice on that. <laughs> Don't make me watch it again, please. Absolutely not, Jenny. Oh, what am I saying? Roll it again. <laughs> oh. It's literally like a 180. Yes, uh, 180, or in skiing terms, arse over tit. I didn't pass out, but instantly I felt this pain down my back and um, I couldn't move. And the worst was yet to come. The GoPro actually went flying as well. Not the GoPro, anything but the GoPro. It just kind of lands in the snow. Uh, and then a few minutes later, my friend Mike comes along and has obviously found it. And <laughs> you just see him kind of smudge out, the, smudge the snow off the screen. Thank God, the camera's safe. By the way, how was Jenny? This was probably the most embarrassing part, was they came with their kind of trolley sledge thing that they put me in, and they were lifting me up, and they managed to, like, put me up to sitting, and then they were trying to put me back down, and I couldn't... I just... My back would not go back down again. That trolley sledge thing is called a stretcher, Jenny. And sadly, despite doctor's attempts, after that she went downhill fast. So I was being pulled down on, with, but I was with my head up. At least it's still connected to your shoulders. Everybody just stops and stares at you, and you're kind of like, yeah, you're the idiot that had the accident on the mountain that is being lifted down the mountain on a sledge. Well, at least this idiot filmed it for us. You'll be happy to know her back and GoPro are both better now, even if her pride is still a bit sore. But if you think the skiers are reckless, there's one bunch that really take the piece. Snowboarders. Oh, dear. He absolutely did not see that coming. They could really use warning lights this lot, couldn't they? In fact, he had right of way. There's a strict highway code on the slopes drawn up by the International Ski Federation. The snowboarder coming from behind was supposed to get out of the way. Yep, categorically that was a hit and run. A red run by the looks of it. So, if you're at the back, look out for your fellow skiers. Take it nice and slow. I said take it slow. Well, if there's such a thing as a snow claims bonus on the slopes, you've just lost it, fella. And speaking of losing it... This hapless border has ploughed straight into an unsuspecting woman. And he's getting a lot of French stick from her husband. And I'm not talking about baguettes. He's 
face in meltdown. Like these guys. They say fire and ice don't go together. Welcome to the exception. Look at them go. What skill, what talent, what discipline. Guys, I have to say, that was hot stuff. And now for the big finale. Here he comes. Well, that chump's not going to set the world on fire. Might ignite his salopettes, though. There might have been a reason the other guys did the jump on skis. I guess he didn't get the memo. Time for a spot of boating now. And let's kick off with an oldie. But it's a goodie. This was filmed on a trip across the lake in Missouri, USA. So sit back, hold tight, and enjoy a nautical wipeout at its very finest. The old guy hits the deck like a shop dummy during the January sales. And as for that other guy's sunglasses, they flew right off his head. Must have been aviators. That really took the wind out of their sails. Is everyone OK? The bloke at the back is a bit seasick. Everyone else must be well jealous. They look like they lost their teeth. Right, head count. There were seven of them on the way out, and now there's only six. Has anyone seen the captain? There he is, thank goodness. Otherwise, they'd have no one to sue. Thankfully, everyone on that boat was OK. But for a vacation that's a little more smooth sailing, we might recommend a boat where things move at a more leisurely pace. No, this fella hasn't got trapped wind. We're going cruising, like 26 million other holidaymakers worldwide, including a growing number of millennials. A more gentle and refined break you couldn't ask for, right? Whoa, ladies! It all kicked off aboard the Anthem of the Seas when these catfighting cruisers went for each other in the cafeteria. It brings a whole new meaning to the phrase, ship's decking. We showed this to someone who's been on the front lines. That, that honestly is a prime example of exactly what happens on a cruise ship. People have too much sun, the weather, the tension of the entire cruise ship just gets to them and they just end up having a fight. And it happens way more often than people think it does. Looks like this fight is going overboard. What they need is someone with a cool, calm head on their shoulders to help mediate this volatile situation in a measured manner. You grabbed hold of her, you hit her, so you assaulted her, love. Ah, so not him then. The fact that they're drinking alcohol from the minute they get up to the minute they go to bed, and they can get it, so they do, and they just drink all night. <laughs> Now, we want to make this absolutely clear. We're not saying that bunch are drunk. But they are definitely cruising for a bruising. However, this chap looks like he's been taking advantage of the all-inclusive bar. But he's not actually been on the sauce. This passenger managed to hold his camera steady enough to film the kind of storm described by nautical experts as bloody terrifying. Now that's what I call the high seas. The brochure promised sea views, but I don't think that's what the guys filming this signed up for. But you'd pay good money to go underwater like this at sea life, so swings and roundabouts. They say if you feel seasick, just keep your eyes on the horizon. Only really works, though, if there actually is a horizon. Whenever you set sail on a massive lump of ship, what you don't want is to find yourself adrift off the coast of Mexico after a fire in the engine room kills all the power. Yes, including the electricity. But guess what? 
That's exactly what happened to these passengers, who found themselves filming a trip aboard the Carnival Triumph that can only be described as a stinker. The engines give their electricity for the ship, which require everything requires electricity on the ship, such as the toilets. The toilets on the ship, they're all powered by electricity. Same as like the airplanes. And if you don't have it, you haven't got that sound of Well, you end up with one stinky lavvy. And this is our lovely bathroom with the sewer that's going back and forth as we rock. Is that the captain's log? The smell of urine as well as people's, I shouldn't say shit. <laughs> it was wasn't pleasant at all, especially when you're walking down the corridors and you were walking in it. Walking around your flip-flops and you're like, oh. That's disgusting. I mean, we're in flip-flops. So, stranded 150 miles out at sea and with no flushing toilets, the passengers renamed this ship the Poop Cruise. And you wouldn't believe the crap the passengers had to put up with coming out the ship's tannoy. And very important information, folks, on the toilet system here on board. As you probably know by now, the toilets are not flushing and it's going to start causing a little bit of a problem in a short while. So we've come up with a plan. Oh, thank God! There's a plan. So, folks, what we're going to do is we're going to deliver some red bags to all of the bathrooms on board. And if you do need to do a number two, we ask that you please do <laughs> deposit that into the red bags. Poo in a bag? That's the plan. Well, the good news is it doesn't actually count as part of your baggage allowance. You need to do, you know, a number two, you need to poop. Please do it in the red bag and drop it off in the bins, in the corridors. OK. How's this actually going to work? Presumably they dump them on the poop deck. They end up being everyone getting the small little bins and just sitting on the bin and pooping into that. And you're like, OK, you have to be able to balance or you're on the floor. I know it's not the best scenario, folks, but it seems like the best option that we have right now. Not the best scenario. That's an understatement. You have some people demand you off the ship and you're like, but there is nowhere you can go. Prop the door open to get some air. Good thinking, madam. When it came to the third day, people were thinking, OK, we'll never get home. We are stuck here. Basically, they turned the ship into one big floater. And with those little red bags piling up, the passengers aboard the poop cruise found themselves taking extreme measures to escape their predicament. Just like a refugee camp in the end. Everyone was outside, mostly. If you couldn't find somewhere outside, you'll be sleeping under the stairwells. After five days of holding their breath and their noses, the passengers were rescued. But all would agree it was a memorable cruise for all the wrong reasons. The operators later apologised for the accident and said it certainly wasn't something they would want their guests to experience. But if you are planning a trip on a cruise ship, I give it five minutes. Coming up, we're getting our teeth into the animals we see on holiday. Just like these tourists on a lovely day trip in Mexico. They've got their camera phones out to film dolphins at play in their natural habitat. But what happens next? Let's have a look, shall we? Now, if there's one thing we love about going on holiday, it's getting up close and personal with the local wildlife. Makes your heart swell for these majestic but endangered animals, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. I thought they were supposed to be intelligent creatures for Flip's sake. But he's fine. Until he ends up in a tuna net. Right, where were we? Oh, yes, animals. There are some truly dangerous critters out there to spice up your holiday adventures, all right? <laughs> In fact, just like this highly venomous diamondback rattlesnake the guy in this clip has come up against while out hiking. I am afraid to move. I am frozen in my tracks right now. Frozen in your tracks? I'd be crapping in my pants. That snake's venom could kill you in just a few hours. All I did is sit down to take a little breather. And crawling out of the brush over to my left was this guy and I don't know what to do. You could ask the cameraman to help you. And try to blow on him to get him to move. Yeah, that's a great idea, blow on it. 
He's not moving at all. Whatever you do, don't touch his tail. Oh, I'm gonna try to touch his tail. No, I said don't touch his tail. What, are you crazy? That's the rattly bit. Have you never seen a cowboy film? He sees me. Oh my God! You said it, mate. I do not want to move right now. I am shaking. I need to find something to poke him with. Oh, Look at the balls oh on that guy. Mind you, his trousers are quite tight. This is the dangers of sitting in the wild and not taking a moment just to observe your surroundings. Come on, go the other way. Go the other way. I don't know what to do, I think. I told you. Ask your mate filming this for a bit of help. I could swear he's not listening to me. Come on, go the other way. Yeah. Is he gone? Yeah, he's gone. Quick, leg it! Whoa. But not everyone's trying to get away from these critters. Some nutters are using their smartphones to get closer. I am so friggin' excited right now. We're in the Everglades. We've only been here for like an hour and already we've got about a 10 foot uh, female alligator here. It's a bit hard to tell now, but there we go. What a beauty. He's Scott Adams, exotic animal zookeeper from Telford, an all round fan of dangerous beasts. Doesn't matter if uh, I'm having a day off or a holiday, it always seems to end up uh, revolving around animals, whether I'm flying off to Madagascar to explore the rainforests or just having a day in a zoo. Seems like uh, I'm a bit of a glutton for punishment. But Scott's main animal passion is for the snappy variety. Oh, big one in front. I'm quite a fan of uh, crocodiles and alligators. Uh, a bit too much of a fan, actually. I've, uh, I've even been unlucky enough to be bit by an alligator. I know how dangerous they can be. Yeah, I could show you a few good videos and pictures. <laughs> Ooh, nasty. Before we got married, I managed to get bit at the zoo by one of our, by about a five foot alligator, which um, put me in hospital and uh, left me in a right state. So I was in stitches for the wedding. Whoops. <laughs> Probably not the kind of wedding snaps your bride had in mind. Still, Scott lived to tell the tale. But will these boaters who filmed their holiday in Botswana be so lucky? Oh. Oh, oh, right there, big, huge. Relax, chaps. It's probably just a log. Coming around, coming around. OK, it's not a log. It's coming this way, OK? Yeah, Can I just get the paddle? Yeah, get the paddle, get the paddle. If we lose that, we're up this creek without, well, a, a paddle. I read on the internet it's more afraid of you than you are of it. <laughs> Note to self. Don't trust anything you read on the internet, ever. Yes, the thing looked me in the eye, man. That is an absolutely massive crocodile from where I'm sitting. What do you think, Scott? That is an absolutely massive crocodile, isn't it? Uh, thanks, Scott. Are we sure he's an expert? Coming around. <laughs> Coming at him quite fast as well. So it's looking pretty aggressive. Coming at him at this speed, it's probably not coming to eat them. Try telling these guys that. I think they probably need to uh, turn the boat around and uh, get up the river and make it snappy. What do you think, Scott? I think they probably need to uh, turn the boat around and uh, get up the river and make it snappy. Oi, Winkle, I'll do the funnies. That's better. Here's another one. And it's a British holidaymaker going for a relaxing lakeside stroll in Australia. But boy, is she in for a surprise. That looks like an angry little crocodile. It is actually quite a small crocodile in the grand scheme of things. It's kind of a little bit of a tiddler, but that's probably about the size of the crocodile a bit me. So um, I think that uh, it's definitely uh, something that you'd want to watch out for and definitely something if you were a, a young girl filming a fish, that's the last thing that you'd be expecting to see. So we've learned an important lesson today, haven't we, class? If you want to see some animals on holiday, the best place is in the zoo. <laughs> or even better, on television.
But it's not just the local wildlife our holidaymakers are shooting. They're also out on excursions, filming the sights, the sounds, the culture. You all right? Good. Yeah, you can do it. This lady has gone to visit the famous Coochie tunnels used in the Vietnam War. Wow. There she goes, ducking down. She ducks in with no trouble at all. Slowly. Getting out again, though, oh. <laughs> is more of a struggle. <laughs> the tunnels are only 80 centimetres tall and 50 centimetres wide. Not being rude, madam, but those aren't your dimensions. The hips don't lie. When she burned off lunch, she was slim enough to climb out. Now, when it comes to excursions, there's one place that's got it all. Egypt. But for one geezer in Giza, Tommy Allen, this view wasn't quite close enough. So my tour guides just told me that I won't be able to climb the smallest of the three pyramids of Giza. Whenever I get challenged to do something, I have to prove, like, sort of prove them wrong. So I was like, yeah, I will, I can, I can. So then, um, here goes. Hmm, <laughs> saying you can't do something isn't the same as challenging you. But next thing you know, Tommy's up the pyramid like a mountain goat. But there's a catch. You see, the Egyptian fuzz, or should that be fez, don't take too kindly to people climbing all over their irreplaceable ancient monuments. You could get up to three years in jail. Well, I've heard about the conditions in Egyptian prisons, and uh, it's not nice. <laughs> Despite the threat of incarceration, Tommy tackled this 51-degree incline like a champ and caught on his action cam a view from 65 metres up, seen by only a handful of people in the history of the planet. As soon as I got to the top and looked over the other side and saw how small the people were at the bottom, I thought, wow, this is really dangerous. I, I can't remember the numbers, but I think maybe 50 people have died in the last 100 or 200 years falling off. That's amazing. There have been 50 people in the world as stupid as him. I thought he was a one-off. Which is why there's quite a lot of bad language in the video. <laughs> Fuck. Me. Fuck. So that's what they mean by the curse of the pharaohs. Shit. But if you think going up looks scary, Tommy reckons going down is even scarier. One step at a time. When you're going up, you're, you're facing the pyramid, but you can't do that when you go down because you have to see where you're walking. So I kind of had to, like, slide my bum off the edge of each stone and, like, get my foot in right as I was on the way down. The biggest wonder of the world is that he didn't fall off. But if he thinks he's got a sore bum sliding down the stones, just wait till he gets in an Egyptian prison shower, because Egypt's finest were waiting for him at the bottom. I didn't know how much trouble I'd be in when I got down. Sharif, my tour guide, was arguing with the police. They were shouting at him. He said that they want to take your camera, they want to take you to prison. Um, they're, telling, they're saying about taking to me to prison for letting you up there. Yeah, well, my tour guide said I challenge you to climb the smallest of the three, so... He was just like, they want money. Three years in a foreign slammer? Or the cash alternative? I'll take the money. In the end, I paid about 100 Egyptian pounds. They're not stupid, those pyramid police. Which worked out to be about a tenner. What? They're well stupid, those pyramid police. It was worth it. It was worth it in the end for a tenner. <laughs> Admittedly, the view you shared was out of this world, but we have to ask, why didn't you climb the biggest one? The other one is just gigantic, and I was, I was eyeing it up, but the, on many sides, it's very, very crumbly, and I just thought it's not worth It's going to take me an hour or so to get up to the top of that one. I suppose you're right. You'd have to be a complete nutter to attempt that one, or a fanatical German. Hi, I'm Andre, and I've been to the top of the world's biggest pyramid. In probably the most blatant example of one-upmanship since records began, Andre Cieszelski from Munich in Germany decided to climb all 146 metres of the Great Pyramid of Giza. That is what you call the height of stupidity. It was uh, a really long way, and I never thought I'm going to make it to the top because the stairs, they were so huge. Who'd have thought? What with it being called the Great Pyramid and everything? I enjoyed a few moments, uh, like of freedom, and then I went down, because the police already spotted me when I climbed to the top, and I think they, they probably freaked out a little bit. 
exciting stuff. And surely Tommy the Brit has got nothing but the utmost respect for his Teutonic pyramid climbing rival. I think he's copycat. Ah, maybe not. Because he does the same things in the video as I did in mine, like how he put his arms up. Yeah, he's got a point. Look. Or maybe he was just balancing and didn't want to fall off. He may have been higher up, but he didn't have the same view as I did on that day. Fair enough, mate, but you got fined. He only got a slap on the wrist. Isn't that right, Andre? Also, I'm banned from Egypt, so I won't, I won't be able to go back there. My mistake. He got himself banned, which is a shame, as our young German friend had probably reserved his place at the top of the pyramid with a beach towel. Let's call it a draw, shall we, chaps? <laughs> You're both as dumb as each other. <laughs> But if you want to reach dizzy heights without that kind of effort, you could do worse than take an excursion to the fun fair. But I'll warn you, some of the rides aren't for the faint-hearted. Like this slingshot in Florida. The slingshot has had riders questioning their mortality since it was invented in 1978. It flings punters 100 metres into the air at almost 160 kilometres an hour. Right, ladies, hold on tight. <laughs> hey, potty mouth. You might want to check on your friend. I think she's nodded off. I'm joking. She's not nodded off. What's actually going on is the gravitational forces have affected this young lady's blood flow meaning that her brain isn't getting quite enough oxygen to, uh, stay with us for any meaningful length of time. Here, someone give her a nudge. And she's back in the room. And she's left again. Right, I think that's enough. You've dribbled in the seat. Definitely not the worst you could have done in it, but still. Now it's time to see what our holidaymakers get up to when under the influence of the demon drink. Have a look at this girl trying to get around him and see if you can work out what happens next. Right, let's see. We showed you this girl trying to get the party started by ordering four sambukas and also some drinks for our friends. But what happened next? Well, there's a reason that that one slightly less drunk fella's filming her. It's because she's just tried to buy drinks from him, from the DJ. Sorry, love, the DJ isn't doing that sort of mixing. He points her to the bar and she responds with directions of her own. Mind you, She's not the only one with Boo's brain. They're pissed up, and that DJ must be slightly pissed off. Yep, when it comes to drunken holiday antics, British holidaymakers are in a league of their own. And thanks to smartphones, all the embarrassing hookups and gruesome injuries that result from having a skinful down the nag's head in San Antonio can now be recorded so that future generations can marvel at our stupidity. It seems as though this girl has been enjoying some liquid refreshment with her pals on holiday. Well, it's no surprise. They're having a lovely picnic by the lake in brilliant sunshine. Also, she seems to be getting very heated about something or other. All in all, I'd say she needs to cool off. <laughs> That'll do it. Let that be a lesson to us all about the dangers of drinking while on holiday. And just to make sure we've all learned that lesson, let's see it again. <laughs> the odd brusque makes holidaymakers think they have superhuman abilities, like the kind exhibited by this Russian balcony climber. I'm not sure if he has been knocking it back, but this certainly looks like something you'd attempt after one too many vodkas. What a rascal. I hope he's not got vertigo. That would make him a dizzy rascal. Sorry, that was painful. And so was that. 
He was fine. But our next holidaymaker ended up a lot further away than in the bushes. <laughs> Davy McCallum, part-time wrestler, full-time Glaswegian, recently had a somewhat spontaneous holiday experience that started when he hit his favourite watering hole in the lookout for his fellow grapplers, who were nowhere to be seen. So, being on his own, he decided to call it a night, right? Once I realised that the wrestlers weren't there, I started to get quite a bit of drink in me. The last thing I remember is getting in a taxi, and then that's, that's pretty much where my, my, my night ended. Might be where his night ended, but Davy's adventure had just begun. The next day brought quite a surprise when he had to wrestle with his memory. Oh, man, I'm rough as fuck. Woke up in my dodgy hotel room, man, and it's trash, I just ran it. David didn't know where the hell he was, but at least he hadn't lost his phone, meaning he could film his confusion. So I went outside. I noticed the place was looking a wee bit different. We've all been there, waking up in unfamiliar surroundings after a night on the tiles. But Davey got so drunk in Glasgow, he reckoned he'd ended up almost 50 miles away. I think I'm in Edinburgh or something, man, because there's a lot of trams about the place. In Edinburgh? That's practically a foreign country. But it gets worse. I'm going to ask somebody where about in Edinburgh, man. Excuse me, mate, where are we right now? Where are we? Shit, he doesn't talk English. No need to panic, Davy. That's what a lot of people think when they speak to you. Because I'm I'm so Scottish and so like, I've got a really thick Glaswegian accent, I thought maybe the person just didn't understand and just like, walked by. Yeah, it's not just your accent that's thick, Davy. But then the penny finally dropped. Excuse me, big man, where are we right now? Where are we? Where are we? Aye. Ah, Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Uh, <laughs> where? No chance, no. He didn't just say Amsterdam, did he? Yes, clever clogs, he did. Amsterdam, over 400 miles away, in Holland. Uh, that was not Edinburgh. No, you see, this is Scotland, full of men with beards who are very noisy. And this is Holland. Scotland, Holland. Are you sure you're not pulling our leg? What fucking day is it? I've lost track of time. Oh, no, it's fun. How the fuck did I even afford to get to fucking Amsterdam? I've got a better question. How the hell did you end up there in the first place? So I had to start piecing things together. I checked my emails and stuff like that. It turns out I'd booked a fight. No KLM. I had a message for them, basically saying something about a last minute offer. And Davey obviously remembered his passport, if not anything else about the night in question. It's all fun and games when you're blanking out in your mate's house and you're waking up in your bed for a sick or something like that, or you're waking up in your bathtub or you're waiting in your, waking up in your mate's garden or something like that. It's all fun and games. And you're waking up two hours away in a plane. You know what I mean? It's a bit scary. Well, it's a tall tale, you have to admit. But we haven't actually touched on the worst thing about Davy's impromptu vacation. I've lost my hat and all. <laughs> Hang on. You've lost your memory, and you're more concerned with losing your hat. That's the one good thing that's came through the story. I managed to get the hat replaced, and it's actually... The hat and one's better. Well, at least he got a new hat to go with his cracking hangover. Oh, hell. That's it for now. And please remember, whatever you get up to on holiday, make sure your phone is fully charged and your camera is at the ready. Now, go knock yourself out. Goodbye. <laughs>